think that one of the hardest things for those with TBI to handle is the feeling of being forgotten and just out of sight, out of mind, but um, just seems like you've run out of your sick days and, you know, I've not really had a real fabulous conversation except with my two or three dearest friends because people don't know how to talk to us and yet we're just normal people. <laughs> we just have a big problem. But are we asked, what do you do during the day? I'm told at times what I do during the day and I don't think I do that during the day. <laughs> I'm not aware of it. No one is really asking. I wonder what they think. And I know we probably tease a lot, maybe about laying around, doing nothing. But reality is we are busy. We have work to do. And we have a home. Some of you still have children at home. We're grandparents. And we're still trying to fill in as best we can. Some of us can do much better than others. It just depends on our situation. Some of us have a job. Some of us don't have a paying job. Some of us are advocates. And that has been very, very rewarding. So sometimes the conversation, I think, I appreciate those who treat me like a normal human being and that I do have a life outside of being <laughs> in pain and not feeling too hot a lot of times. They're able to overlook that and yet still have the respect and the courtesy of knowing that there's limits and yet not letting that be the big scheme, the big whole deal. I think that's something that bothers a lot of us is that we don't want to be the big deal. We would like for people just to carry on. But I had a conversation with my son and we were talking and I said, you know, I think some things I've kind of figured out. And when it's the mother that has had a injury, um, an invisible disability, whatever, that seems to affect the family more because the mother typically is the planner. And all of a sudden, there's no planning. And, you know, if the dad has been used to that for many years, then he kind of does, he's floundering. He's trying to figure out his job. Not only is he doing his work and his role, He's taken over the mother's role, most likely, a lot of it. And there's still things that are not being done. And the mother is pushing herself beyond what is expected by her physicians. So everything at, at first, especially, is just a mess. And we forget, I think, as a whole, as a big family, that sometimes the we have to take over that role of, of, law, of planning. That when we get together, we may have to take over, hey, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this because mom is not, <laughs> you know, she's not gonna be doing any of it. And so it's hard to really get into that groove, even though you don't like it, that you're not doing anything. It's, a, it's very hard to think of something to do, especially, when you are trying to put on a happy face, because you are happy. You're happy that you're all together. You're enjoying your, your family. And yet, some of us, you know, we have to be careful because of brain injury or whatever, that maybe something comes out of our mouth that isn't quite right. Or maybe we're gonna be mis misunderstood. And so sometimes we have to stop and have a very good, deep, conversation about communication. And I think when we don't stop often and talk about communication, 
we end up with a bigger problem when there's really not a problem. And I am one, and I know that you know every family is different, but I raised my children <laughs> to talk. Now, every child is different. And so, you know, some children will grasp onto that and they talk, <laughs> they tell you everything. And then others are more reserved and you respect each personality. But at some point, no matter what the personality is, we have to communicate to keep that family going. And some of the hardest times in a life of a family is when someone feels excluded. And this can be anyone because everyone is trying to cope with the changes. And <clears throat> it's not uncommon for the one who is the sickest to be left aside or to not be counted in, <clears throat> to not be thought of. Um, and I am not one of these that feel like I have to see my children every month. You know, I have to see them every week. I have to be with them. I have to do this. They, they've got to come by. They've got to do this. They've got to do that. I'm not that type, but I think it's important that we communicate and we have let slide sometimes things that were my role. <clears throat> and instead of me speaking up and, and designating someone to take over that role, you know, maybe there's that permission that needs to come. I don't know. But that's what we have to deal with. And there's so much more. And there's more to come. And I really appreciate all of you that are chipping in and telling me your stories so that I can do my best to share, because this is not about me. It's about our community. <laughs>